So we are continuing on part two of uh, 8.1 of Savage Book, edition 10. We are talking about the C string and functions. So we are going to be talking about that right now as part of two here. So remember, we did this before two strings when we learned the string. But equal sign does not exist for C string. C string does not have equal sign. So we cannot say equal if you have a C string. So there are some functions that we can use to accomplish some of the things that we normally wouldn't do it with the string. So if I want to assign something to my C string, of course, that something has to be a string type or another C string. Then there is a function called strcpy, that's a string copy. That's going to take the second parameter and it's going to copy it on the first one. I have paid my share of mixing them up and instead of writing to what I'm looking for, I would destroy it by the other way around. So this is the source. This is the, this is the one that's going to copy to it. When it's copying, it's going to delete what it was there before. So we have created a string with 11 character in it. We're going to copy this one in. So what's going to happen? It's going to put one, two, three, four, five character plus the backslash zero in there. Now, the issue is going to come in that what's going to happen if what I'm copying over is bigger than my source array. Remember, C++ does not check the end of array. So if my second one is bigger than my first one, it's just going to write on top of it. And some variables that you have right after the source array is going to be overwritten. So some other variable is going to be mixed up. To protect, now you can understand why I don't like the C string that much, because we have to keep track of all of these things. So to protect that, we can potentially So this is, this is the concept. If I have the second one as hello and the first one as ABC, so ABC has four a character. Remember, if I copy hello on top of this one, the H is going to go here, E is going to go here, L is going to go here. The next L is going to overwrite my backslash zero. I already destroyed my backslash zero. Then it's going to keep going. So the things that I had after this array is going to be replaced with L O and backslash zero. So I'm going to have three bytes after this array going to be destroyed. So that's the problem with this function. So how can we fix it? There is a way to fix it, and that is to use a n a number after it. So we're going to say we're going to copy this one into this one. And we are not going to go more than nine. Why nine? Because the size is 10. So we're going to go size minus one because we need that backslash n. Zero, I'm sorry, backslash zero. We got to keep track of those. So keeping track of these functions, the first one that we have is strcpy, string copy, and the, the one with the number on it, strncpy is going to have a number at the end of it. It is just a replacement alternative way of doing equal sign. We do not have equal sign in C string. And then that's copy the second one to the first one. All right, so we're moving on to the next one. 
that is equality. So if I want to compare two C string with each other, I'm checking for equality. Again, the equality does not exist in for C string. So there is a function for it. And the function is STRCMP, a string comparison. So the way it works is going to check the first one with the second one. If they are equal, it's going to return zero. If the first one is bigger, it's going to check the character by character starting from the beginning. If they are equal, it's going to go to the next one and it's going to check their ASCII number. So capital A is 65. Lowercase a is 96. So 65 is smaller than 96. So if I have two string that one starts with capital A, the other one starts with capital uh, lowercase a, the capital A is smaller than lowercase. So we got the string copy over here for the equality. And we got a string comparison. Uh, so we got a string copy with number, a string comparison with number. So how does this work? If they are equal, it's going to return zero. Remember, zero is false. Zero is false. Any other number is true. So when I'm checking this for an if statement or any other statements, it's going to return zero. Zero is false. So if the characters are not matching, it's going to give me a negative number for the numeric code of the first parameter is less. So if the first one is less than the second one in ASCII table, character by character, then it's going to give me a negative number. Uh, if it's going to be bigger number wise in ASCII table, it's going to give me a positive number. And remember, these are not zero. So any number is going to be true. So when you put it in the if statement, that's why it came up as true, meaning that it would have a negative number or positive number, and the false would be zero. So I put this together over here. So if they are, let me move this one away from here to here. Okay, so if the first one is greater than second one, it's gonna give me a positive number. If the first one is less than the second one, it's gonna give me a negative number. If they are equal, they're gonna give me a zero. Now, I put STRNCMP. So we can add a number for the STRCMP comparison. That is gonna tell me how many of them we wanna compare. So I have two string, I want to compare the first five characters, or I want to compare the first two characters. Then I can put the number in there, and that's what is going to be compared. So that's the way it's going to look like STRN CMP. We're going to have the first one. We're going to have the second one, and then we're going to have a number. That's going to check the first n characters. So we have a couple of more functions in the CSTRING that we want to go over it. One of them is called STRLEN. That's a string length. So the string length is going to give you how many characters you have. It does not count the null character. So that's the difference between the length and the size. So your size is going to be always one more than your number of characters. Your size can be much bigger, but the length is just going to give you how many characters do you have before backslash zero. Another function is called STRCAT, that's a string concatenation. Uh, we, we saw something in the file for appending. So we were 
writing to a file, it would delete it. But if you want to append it, it would write it at the end of it. So strcat is going to do that. It's going to preserve the what you have in the source, and it's going to add it to the end of it. It's concatenation. So in here, we have example that uh, the, we're creating a 20 character. We put something in there, and we are concatenating something at the end of it. And the key is, is not checking to see if it's not falling off this array. There is a possibility that the second one is higher than what we can handle. But C++ doesn't check it, so it's going to write in there. It's going to say the rain in Spain. There is no space over here between rain and in the space because there is no space before in or after rain in the original one. So it is supposed to say str n c a t. So it's supposed to say str n dot c s t. Okay, so the n, the way we're going to calculate it is we're going to have the size that we're going to have in here is 20. We're going to take away whatever we already have in there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means I am going to have actually, it cannot be 20 minus eight because we need one more for our backslash zero, so it should be 28 minus eight plus one. So we need one extra one here, which is gonna give us 11, because we have to keep track of our backslash zero. So we got, these are the, uh, the functions. You need to know these things for your exam coming up. So strcpy, strcmp, STRCAT, and they have the ones with the N in the middle. And the first one is for assignment. It's going to take the second one, put it on top of the first one. The second one is comparison. It's going to check them to see if they are equal, greater than, or less than. The third one is appending. It's just take the second one, append it to the uh, first one. Uh, and these are the ones with the n. And the last function is strlen. That's going to give us the lengths of our string, C string. So these are all in the display 8.1 in your book. So take a look at them. Uh, be sure you understand them. If you have any question. Uh, let me know, and then we can go over it more. So the bottom line is they are uh, arrays, and uh, let me stop right there. So we were talking about this one. So we're going to come back here. We're going to uh, stop right there, and then we're going to go to the next one. So take a few minutes. Uh, go over these things, see if you can answer these questions. It shouldn't take you more than 10, 15 minutes. So let me know if you have any difficulty with any of them. Bring it in the class to discuss about it and see where we're going to go with this.